Saturday, March 25, 1893, The New York Times. Bad scare for Newtown. A man with smallpox mingles with its people. Capture of the delirious patient who escaped from Long Island City Pest House. Fifteen hours in the cold and wet, wanted to find his sister. Long Island City, March 24. An escaped smallpox patient, delirious and in an advanced stage of the disease, wandering for several hours today through its principal streets, going from house to house, and even riding in its streetcars, has put Newtown in a state of mind, and certain portions of it into a state of panic. The patient is Michael Burns, 18 years old, who, as stated in today's New York Times, escaped from Long Island City's New Pest Hospital at Thompson Avenue and Hulst Street about 10.30 last night. He had been in the hospital but two days, having been taken from his home, 51 Jackson Avenue, on Tuesday. When Dr. McCune, who had charge of the hospital, made his final rounds of the beds about 6.30 p.m., he warned nurse Robert Kennedy that Burns was liable to become delirious and instructed him that if Burns should become so, he must tie him to his bed. Soon after this, the night watchman, Stephen Kelsey, went out to get some milk for the patients and, to Dr. McKeon's disgust, did not return till midnight, leaving Nurse Kennedy alone. At about 10 o'clock, the nurse visited Burns and found him delirious. The nurse says that a terrific struggle between the two ensued and that finally he locked Burns in the room, supposing that it would be impossible for him to escape. It turned out differently. Grabbing some of his clothing, the delirious patient sprang from the window of his room to the ground, a distance of but a few feet. Then, placing an iron bedstead that lay in the yard against the 15-foot fence that enclosed the grounds, the man climbed over and dropped down on the outside and made off. The rain was falling and freezing as it fell, and in this weather, the patient wandered all night. He went up Thompson Avenue toward Newtown, branched off when near that village, and brought up in the adjoining village of Masbeth a little before seven o'clock this morning. He again headed toward Newtown, going up Grand Street. He rang the bells of several houses and inquired at each for his sister Katie in tremulous tones. Later, he lay down in the drizzling rain upon a heap of stable refuse on Maiden Lane and fell asleep. He was found here about nine o'clock by Constable Holdsworth, who took him before Justice Howard, charging vagrancy. He had on a calico shirt, ragged trousers, and shoes worn from his long tramp of seven miles through briars and stony byways. He had on no underclothing and was wet to the skin and shivering. Justice Howard saw that the man was insane and questioned him. Have you been sick? asked the justice. Yes, I have the fever, replied the wanderer. What fever? Typhus? Yes, that's it, typhus. As the sick man uttered this, the spectators fled in all directions. Judge Howard tossed Burns a nickel, saying, Get out of town right off. Don't stay here another minute. Burns meekly obeyed and went out of the little courtroom with uncertain steps. Then he boarded horse car number 20, bound for the stables at Masbeth. On the car was the little six-year-old son of County Judge Gerritsen and an elderly lady who had him in charge. During the 10 minutes ride to the stables, Burns kept inquiring if they had seen his little sister Katie and declaring that he was looking for her. Arriving at the car stables, he wandered among the cars, looking in, under, and about them, all the while calling, Katie! Foreman George Robinson took the man in charge and questioned him, while a number of onlookers gathered. 
Councillor George Fisher arrived and after a look at Burns exclaimed, Good heavens, stand back. That man's got smallpox. He's in a delirium now. Another stampede followed and the vicinity was still in a ferment when the New York Times reporter arrived after tracing the fugitive from his starting point to the stables. It was promptly decided that Burns was Long Island City's missing patient and Mayor Sanford was telephoned to. He ordered the Pest House Ambulance to go at once for Burns and asked that he be detained and made as comfortable as possible until its arrival. Constables Highland and Holdsworth, however, insisted upon tumbling the sick man into an open wagon of their own against Foreman Robinson's protest and driving off with him toward Long Island City in the pelting rain. Instead of driving the man directly back to the hospital, they floundered about for an hour or more, finally reaching the Queens County Jail, probably believing a fat fee awaited them. As the sheriff naturally refused to take Burns in, they had to take the back track for two miles or more and finally landed Burns at about 1.30 this afternoon at the hospital where Dr. McCune at once examined him and said that the 15 hours exposure had not affected his patient as badly as he had feared it would. The searching party of 12, including Drs. McKeon and Hinkson, four policemen, and six citizens who started after Burns as soon as his escape was discovered, kept it up until the news of his capture was learned. Mayor Sanford was indignant this morning over the affair and instructed Dr. McKeon to secure a competent nurse for the hospital at whatever cost to prevent the recurrence of the event. Smallpox in Long Island City has taken a fresh spurt within a few days and the number of cases reported grows each day. Three new cases were reported to the health board today. They were ex-alderman Hugo Schmidt, 311 Moore Street, Robert H. Boylan, letter carrier, 109 4th Street, Katie Kettler, 9 years old, 193 9th Avenue. 